Okay, welcome to our first lesson in statistics. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at conducting a statistical investigation and also the different types of data that we might gather. Um, the, this branch of maths is probably the most important uh, branch of mathematics that you study when you're in school. And that's because we use statistics all the time in our everyday lives. And if you don't use them, you probably uh, read them all the time. So you probably already know that in sports, statistics is used a lot, either to rate an athlete or uh, maybe for an opposing team to, to look at the stats of one team to decide how they're going to play them. Um, statistics is used, for example, by the police, maybe to look at crime rates in a certain area, and that way they know how many police to put in certain areas or where they might need reinforcement. Uh, retail shops and things will use statistics to look at trends within sort of styles and colors so they know how much uh, of a certain type of clothing to order. I mean, they're used all over the place. And, and it's really important that you understand statistics because uh, stats are often misrepresented in the media. So you probably see advertising all the time that say things like nine out of 10 people prefer this brand of toothpaste or, or something like that. So statistics can be used to, um, to kind of sway buyers and uh, and to convince us of something that might not necessarily be true. So we need to be a bit wary of the statistics that we're reading about. So just to give you a, a sort of a formal um, definition, statistics is the art of gathering data, analyzing that data, and then making connections and recommendations about something. So we're first going to look at the, at the um, the cycle of condu conducting a statistical investigation. So the first thing that happen it happens, sorry, is that a real world problem will be observed. So someone might have a question or something that needs to be studied. And from that, we come up usually with a hypothesis. And you might be familiar with this from your science classes. So this is where we would have a hypothesis generated. So for example, our hypothesis might be something along the lines of, Students who complete homework regularly do better on tests than human students that don't complete homework regularly. So this is a hypothesis. It's a statement, something that we could investigate. The next thing that happens is experimental data is collected. So you might collect data by doing an experiment or you might have a questionnaire or a survey or something like that. And the data could be either primary data, which is data that you gather yourself or secondary data, which is data that you get from a, another source, such as a newspaper or uh, an archive or something like that. Once we've collected our data, we can organize the data into tables uh, and graphs so that it's easy to understand. And we'll also do some statistical calculations to describe the data. So these calculations are things you've probably already seen before, mean, median, mode, range, things like that. So that's how we summarize the data. Once we summarize the data, we then interpret it with respect to the problem that we um, first observed. So we might look at whether or not the data supports our hypothesis, or maybe actually our hypothesis was wrong and we need to go back and rethink what we were thinking. And from that, you'll see I've drawn another uh, arrow here going from sort of the, the data back to a real world problem being observed. So we might need to go back and refine our hypothesis or change it and start the whole process all over again. Now, the type of data that we collect can be um, put into two different categories. Quantitative data, which is also sometimes called numerical data. And qualitative data, which is sometimes just referred to as categorical data. So uh, quantitative data is anything that has a number in it. And this can be further divided into two types of numerical data, discrete and continuous. Discrete data is anything that can be counted. So for example, if we were talking about the number of students in a class, we could count that. That's discrete. But continuous data is uh, data that is measured. Okay, so Continuous data might be something like height or weight or time. And continuous data can take on any value. So when we're talking about height, you could say someone that is, say, when we're talking about height, you could say someone is 150 centimeters tall 
or you might get more accurate and say they're 150.5 centimeters tall or 150.555 centimeters tall and you could get more and more accurate. Um, that's how we know the data is continuous. Discrete data it can only take on certain values. So again, if we were talking about the number of students in a class, we could have you know, 26, 27, 28 students in a class, but we couldn't have 27.5 students in a class. That wouldn't make any sense. Okay, so discrete data can only take on certain values. Um, within the qualitative uh, data, we have categorical and ordinal. Um, categorical is anything that is categories, so it's not numerical data. Maybe something like if you were doing a, um, a survey asking for people's favorite colors, that would be a category. Ordinal data is uh, data that's not numerical but has some sort of order to it. So when you say surveys and, and the questions ask you to circle sort of maybe uh, something like strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree, that's um, qualitative data, but it's ordinal. There's an order to it. So take a look at these different um, variables here and put them in the correct boxes. So decide whether or not the data that you're looking at is uh, quantitative and then whether it's discrete or continuous and then qualitative. So is it categorical or ordinal? So we'll do the first one together. Speed of a car, that would be something that you measure. So that would be continuous data, continuous quantitative data because speed is obviously a number. So stop the video now and try the rest of those yourself. Okay, so let's take a look at the answers. Uh, weight of an orange, that's something that you measure, so that's continuous data. The number of doors on a car, that would be discrete because that would be something that is counted. Uh, the time it takes to run 100 meters, time is something measured, that's continuous data. The length of a pencil, also measured, so continuous data. Amount of petrol in a car, again, continuous. The number of children in a family, this is something that is counted, so that would be discrete data. Uh, favorite ice cream flavor, that's not uh, a numerical data, so that's going to be qualitative and it's categorical data. The cost of a newspaper, so money is something that is counted, so money is discrete. And the color of a car is categorical data. Okay, so that's the end of our first video here, just looking at the beginnings of different types of data and also the uh, cycle for conducting a statistical investigation. You can now go on and write your summary of this video and think of your question to come to class with for tomorrow.